What if you could create more kindness in the world just by being you? Everyone has the potential to create and receive more kindness. What if kindness is more than being nice and compassionate to others? Have you ever considered what having more kindness for you could create in your life? Get ready to learn how the energy of kindness is integral to reducing stress in your life and how it can assist in healing your body. Now, here is the host of Cultivating Kindness with Karen, facilitator of healing, Karen Leslie. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me here today. I'm uh, excited and happy and mm, kind of very focused as well. So... Thank you for being here and providing me with your energy and your support and your, your thoughts and everything like that. I really appreciate knowing that you're here and you're watching live. And then I also love that this show will go out for both audio and video recording for all of those of you who are unable to make it live with me on Wednesday afternoons, 2 p.m. Eastern for the time zone I'm in. Perhaps it's even a different day, depending on where you are right now. My name is Karen Leslie, and I'm your host for Cultivating Kindness with Karen each week. And each week I bring to you, or it's my intention to bring to you different topics and different ways of looking at them. You know, to kind of flip things around, make that mind of yours go, huh, that's different. Or maybe you might go, whoa, that's just a little too weird. That's cool. Not a problem. But I really want to kind of get those brain cells going, hmm, I wonder what else is possible. I wonder if there's something I can change that might make my life happier, more exciting, healthier. I don't know, just different in a way that makes you happy and joyful and wish to continue tuning in every week to join me for sure. So this week, what are we talking about? Well, I mean, I'm calling it, you know, hiding our faults. And I've been wanting to talk about this uh, topic for a while now. And I was just kind of always waiting and seeing when it might be the right time for it to come up. A couple of weeks ago, I got the hit that, yep, now it's time to talk about hiding your faults. And so here we are today. And as always, the timing is wonderful. It truly is. You know, faults is a really strong word. And we're going to look at that a little bit. And we're going to dive into sort of like, where does this even come from? And you, may, you will have some ideas. Absolutely as to you know why this is part of everybody's world and it is we all look at you know putting our faults sort of off to the side on the back burner you know bury them down <laughs> dig a hole cover them up however you want to phrase it we look at you know our faults in a way of like we just need to keep them quiet it's reinforced in many, many different areas of our life. You know, and as I'd written in the show notes when we, I was advertising about the show today, you know, I wrote down, lead with your strengths, right? We tell people that all the time. We offer it as advice that this is important. You know, lead with your best qualities, put your best foot forward, you know, all of this different way of phrasing that one idea. And we do it to encourage people, you know, to make them feel a little better if they're a little nervous or unsure about something that they're, you know, about to venture into, like a job interview or a presentation at work, um, you know, meeting new people, whatever it might be. But we, we do really say it from our heart and as a way of being very, very supportive. But when you look at it, when, when we say, you know, lead with your strengths, we are also saying, without using the words, hide your faults. Don't let them show. Just, you know, leave them at home, walk out the door, carrying your strengths with you. Sounds great. And often, like very often, it really works. 
the person can feel more empowered and stronger and confident. And then they come out of wherever they were going and they're like, yes, nailed it or whatever it might be for them. And they're really happy with that. And so we tend to do it again. And we tend to do it again. And the more often we do it, it becomes kind of your, your go-to. And that's all cool. Until it's not. And that's kind of where I want to talk about today. When it really isn't that helpful anymore. When it's your go-to to push aside any area of weakness or faults or insecurities. What is that doing in the long run? When hiding your faults becomes a priority for you because you get addicted to that chemical response in your brain and in your gut, in your body overall, when you lead with your strengths, you know, you, you like that feeling. Your body, your brain likes that chemical response. And so it encourages you to keep doing this. All along, we're sending the message to both our brain, our mind, the cells in our body, that those other areas, they're best left, you know, kind of hidden away behind the curtain. And when you do think about them, that chemical response your body gets doesn't like it as much because it's it's not comfortable. It doesn't come through very often. So, you know, the neural pathways are going, no, 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 no. That's not the one we travel down. Bring me back the other one. And so it's it's an easy way to feel better. And feeling better is not wrong. Don't get me you know, wrong there. Like we want to feel good about ourselves. Absolutely. But truthfully, to really feel fully, like 100%, maybe that's a bit of a stretch for some of us, good about ourselves, it means embracing all of who we are. It does not work long term and in a healthy manner to only embrace a certain percentage of us. We need all of us to show up. We need, yep, those parts that aren't wonderful to be there as well. Does that sound kind of weird? Are you kind of wondering, why are you telling me this, Karen? You know, why would I want to be carrying that around with me and having it close to the surface? And Or like maybe it's going to be behind a curtain that's very thin. And so if somebody can actually look through it and see this that I'm not comfortable with, I'm not ready for that. I don't want that. And that's fair. Absolutely fair. But I'm hoping that by the end of today's show, you'll have a little bit of a different way of looking at it. I'm hoping that your comfort level with looking at this will start to shift. And you'll start to maybe embrace a little bit more of these different sides of you and have them really as a friend, as a part of you that you're okay with. And to have a really good understanding as to why I'm encouraging you to look at this. Right? It is not about, how do I want to phrase this? The words went real quick. Uh, hmm, yes, it is not about bringing your faults or the aspects of you you're not as comfortable with to the forefront of things to maintain you in like victim mode or in um, self-judgment or anything along those lines. It's to bring them forward in a way where hopefully they can be neutral or perhaps better than that but to at least be able to get to the space of them being neutral would be absolutely amazing. I would love that for you and me and myself. Am I 100% forward with all of my difficulties? Hmm. 
I get no, my body's saying no. <laughs> Am I in a different place than I was six months ago? Oh, very strong, yes, absolutely. And knowing that, acknowledging that, looking at that, that encourages me to continue to move forward. So six months from now, I'll be in a completely different space again. And I will be embracing more of who I am and allowing that to be present with me all the time. It's so helpful. It really is. There is this whole cultural aspect of just showing, showing your brightness is the word that's coming through. Showing your capabilities, showing where you can excel. Living in your genius is another way that is often phrased, especially in a, a coaching world and some of the more spiritual ways of looking at things. You know, live in your genius. Well, yes, we all want to be able to be there, but not at the expense of cutting off any part of ourself. Being whole is really important. Being whole is the kindness to you and the kindness to myself that I wish for every person on this planet. To truly embody that energy of kindness and have it work for you and help heal the cells in your body. That takes being in acceptance in totality of who you are. Are you ready for that? Do you think that's something you would like to embrace somewhere where you would like to be heading? I hope so. I really do. Because it's very true that when we keep parts of ourselves over to the side, it does affect our thought patterns. When you're reinforcing, you know, before you go to an interview or before you meet somebody brand new that, you know, don't show this, don't show vulnerability, don't show a weakness. Oh, right. That's not a topic that I think I can talk about. So don't go there. Now, there may be topics that you wish to, to not bring forward and engage in out of kindness for the people you're with. Being aware and sensitive to the environment. Awesome. Absolutely. But if you're hiding that topic out of embarrassment or self-judgment, then that needs to be looked at and understood what's holding that in place, what's underneath that, keeping it very firmly in place. And this is a result often of this whole thing, hiding our faults, only allowing you know, your best foot forward. When we reinforce this way of thinking and these thought patterns that so it comes up, you know, a thought about yourself and you go, no, Think about that. What's the long-term effect of that? It's placing you in a, in a spot of judgment about yourself over and over and over again, right? Never a kindness, no. To recognize an area that we aren't as strong in, fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Because when we see that, then we have the ability to say to ourselves, oh, do I actually wish to maybe heal that or learn more about this so that I could be able to be more successful in certain areas of my life? Or, hmm, okay, so I don't do so well with that. Maybe I need to hire somebody to help me with this, whether it's in your business or in your personal life. I mean, if if you really have difficulty with um, clutter, let's use that as the example, in your home, then maybe you need to hire somebody that can come in and help you with that, help you with organizational skills, help you with differentiating as to what you need to keep, what you do not need to keep, and helping you to actually take it out of your home. It's not a weakness to recognize that you can't manage clutter. It's information for you. Now, what would you like to do with it? Do you stop having people into your house because you get embarrassed? That's not healthy. You're cutting yourself off. You're limiting your, 
your social interactions. There's so much there. So recognizing areas where we struggle is a really great thing to do. So we're going to look more and more at this as we go through the show today. We're coming up to our first break. So I want you to maybe give this a little bit of thought while we are on our break. And when we come back, we're going to look a little more deeply into, okay, so what actually happens when we keep hiding our faults or keeping them out of view from others and ourselves? Because we become very, very good at, at not even acknowledging that that's a part of who we are. So thank you for being here with me today on Cultivating Kindness with Karen. It's wonderful to have you here. Those of you who are live watching on the Inspired Choices Network or some of the other platforms that we're live streaming to right now, it's fabulous to know that you're with us. And if you would like, you know, by all means, come over to the Inspired Choices Network at forward slash chat room. And you can join in the conversation right here with myself and my producer, Sarah, and we can all get together if you like. So in the meantime, you know, or during the commercial break, that would be a great time to find us and pop in. We will be back in just a couple of minutes and carry on this conversation about hiding our faults. Thanks, everyone. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to karen at karenlesley.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. You know, the Inspired Choices Network is many, many things under and does so much. And I know last week, or the previous couple of weeks, I was mentioning to you that I was going to be speaking on a summit called the Take Action Now Summit. And it was hosted by the Inspired Choices Network. That was last Thursday, um, Thursday, February 1st, 2024. And it was amazing. It was, it was fabulous. The speakers were great. Uh, the professional team that was there with every one of us that were speaking, how they guided us, helped us, produced everything, was fabulous. And now all of those talks are available for you to listen to if you would like. You just need to come to the inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. And along the top bar there, you're going to see the word podcast. Scroll down and you will see the Take Action Now Summit. Just click it and you'll be able to go and listen to any or all of the 21 or 20 speakers that we had there. So I encourage you, go and check it out. Listen to all these brilliant people. Check out mine. <laughs> it really, there's a, so much information there that is really, really helpful. So I just wanted to remind you of that summit and that you can actually now go and hear the talks. So it's one of the amazing offers that the Inspired Choices Network is giving all of our speakers, which is so cool. So back to now, hiding your faults. 
So when we do this, when we made this choice, bought into this belief that these need to not be shown to the public, even to an intimate partner, to our children, right? There's so many areas of our life that we feel we need to hide aspects of ourselves. And I know personally, I have done it so many times, especially my struggles with um, depression, eating disorder, the anxiety, and definitely the suicidal uh, thoughts that I would have. I did my best to hide all of that from my children. No question. Was I successful? <laughs> Not really. Not when I spoke to them as adults and said, you know, I'm going to be talking about all of this publicly and I want you to know. None of them were surprised. So they knew. So you've got to remember, we may choose to hide something, but the energy of what that is still resides with us. You cannot take that energy and put a cloak over it, not like an invisibility cloak on Harry Potter or something like that. That doesn't work. The energy is always present. We can choose to ignore it. We can do our best to pretend that it's not there. But when you're with someone that's very sensitive, as all children are, they know even though they may not be saying anything. And that is really valuable information for parents and grandparents or teachers or anyone who is with all these brilliant little people. You will be a little more successful at hiding all of this with people who are older. Teens is kind of where it may st be starting to wane and they're not sort of tapping into their awareness the same way. Adulthood, yeah, a lot of cut it off, closed it down, and you'll be more successful at trying to keep things at bay and having someone not know about it. My husband had no idea I was having suicidal thoughts, none. My children, different story. So who we're with and how things function will make a difference. Where I'm going with this is when we hide these things, then we believe that they are of a strength or a depth that we really must continue to hide them. We really buy into this belief that we feel is true, that no one can know about it. Now, it doesn't have to be anything as serious as some of the things I've just mentioned to you. It could be spelling, M mine as well. Like, you know, if you are really lousy at spelling, then you're going to hesitate to write things out for people. I mean, it's a different world today with spell check and how things are now. I get that. But let's say you're taking uh, notes on a, on a smart board. You're typing things in. It's going out. And the people in the meeting can read what you are writing. You're going to get a red underline saying, ah, spelled incorrectly. It's not going to change it instantly for you. So this weakness that you may see with spelling, it will be shown. Now, I hesitated all my life to write on a chalkboard. Yes, I grew up with chalkboards. Or to do anything like this because my spelling is really poor. When I got older and I would say, I'd be happy to take notes, but my spelling is, is crap. Like it's bad. So I can then take it away, correct the words that are spelled incorrectly, and then I can distribute it to people. But you can't have it right now. Nobody got upset with me. And I felt better about it. It enabled me to work and build that strength. But I needed the courage to let them know and I needed to believe enough in me that I wasn't going to hide behind this as a weakness or a vulnerability. I had to let go of that belief that nobody should know that I can't spell. What's the saying? Can't spell my way out of a wet paper bag or something like that. We need to change what we are buying into as to what's being hidden and why. When we hold on to these things, we create limitations for ourselves. We create walls and barriers, and we make our world much smaller as a result. So when your world is, is getting smaller, there's less opportunities for joy and happiness and new experiences and trying things. 
And sure, you may not like all of it, so you don't need to do it again, but you tried. It's the only way you're gonna know. You will never know if you continue to hide behind your faults. You really, it's not gonna happen. When we hold on to these, we create additional stress and anxiety for ourselves because we're right we are either living in the past where we may have shared something and it didn't go well so we've confirmed no can't go back there or we are living in the future worrying about what could happen if somebody's to find out or if i mess up if i screw up on this Anxiety and stress are going to come in like that. Absolutely. When I was my first job as a receptionist, and it was only uh, 12 years ago at um, massage therapy clinic. Everything computers. And I was like, oh, <laughs> not sure I, I can do this. But in all honesty, I, I needed the job. I, I, our family required the income. And I was really upfront. And I went in with my strengths, my people skills, my communication skills, you know, what I can bring to that front desk position that's important when a client walks in or somebody new is coming in. This kindness energy I have, I knew that it would make a safe space, an inviting space for everyone that walked into that clinic. I was also honest and said, I am not strong with computers, and I know that your cl your clinic works on computers for scheduling and all emails and files and all of that. And they asked me some basic questions. Do you know this or this or what? And I would say yes and a little bit and no, whatever it was. I was being honest. And I got the job. I got the job, I believe, because of my honesty the strengths that I have and my willingness to acknowledge and work with that area that wasn't strong. Was it stressful? Yeah. But I mastered it. It was great. And I loved the job. And when I moved and changed cities, I got another one. Super easy. I had to learn a new system, but that was okay. Hiding the fact that I was going to be uh, <laughs> rough <laughs> with learning the technology required for the clinic to run smoothly would have been a big mistake. Acknowledging this and working with it proved to be fabulous. So there's times when it really is to your benefit to not hide. It takes you out of that stress and that anxiety. It opens up more possibilities for you. And then, you know, the odd time where they go, Karen, and I go, I know, I'm working on it. I did tell you. And we'd laugh. And it would be fine. And any mistakes I made, they got fixed. And when I made the mistake, by fixing it and learning what I had done wrong, it just reinforced how to work with it. It was not a problem. I, it was fine. It was fine because of my attitude, my outlook, and my belief in me. I knew, as you do too, that those strengths you have, they will carry you forward. And those strengths will allow you to overcome these areas where you're struggling. Now, yes, we will need help in most cases. I needed help from the full-time employee, the office manager, the owner of the clinic. He also helped me. The therapists that were there, they were patient and lovely with me. And I received all of their help. And I stepped up and excelled. It is a working relationship. If it was something I was keeping hidden, there is no working relationship there. There is no opportunity for growth. And I buy into the need to hide it more and more because my stress level would go up and up. Your judgments of yourself increase. 
and you get stuck deeper and deeper. That is not the way we want to live or is not the way I choose to live or the way I would like it would be for you. Stepping into who we fully are and buying all of these bits of us, yeah, it can be un unnerving at least, at minimum. But then that's right, when you call in those that can help you. I'm one of those people that can help you. This is an area that I do really well in with helping my clients. And why? Because I've done it for myself. I know so many ways of working with this. And then you throw in this whole side of energy work that I do and how I support your body and your thought processes. Well, it's a real winning combination. No question about it. And if you would like more information, send me an email. Right? Karen at karenlesley.ca and we can have a conversation. We can have you know a 30-minute call. I often them, offer them to everybody, complimentary, so we can see whether or not we are the right fit. Am I the person that can truly help you? If I'm not, I'm going to tell you. Absolutely. It would not be a kindness to you or myself if I didn't share that information wholeheartedly. We're going to go for our next break already. Good grief, this time is flying by. Thank you for being here on Cultivating Kindness with Karen. We've got a lot to continue to talk about when we come back for our break. We're going to look at um, these different aspects of what we're hiding and what to do about it. Like, okay, so now I've shared that they're not a great idea. Now what? I'll let you know after we come back from these commercials, everyone. So don't go away. We'll be back shortly. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen, Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to karen at karenlesley.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everybody. Okay, hiding our faults. We really, we really, hmm, that's really a bit of a command, isn't it? I guess I should rephrase that for you. I would strongly desire that you are willing to look at what it is you're hiding so that you can heal from it and you can be more whole in who you're being at any moment in any time. One of the reasons that we are more comfortable with leading with our strengths is we're actually leading and living from our ego. It tends to feel really good for a lot of different reasons. I'm not going to get into all of that right now. But when we're in that space, we are leading from ego. We are not leading from our soul, our being, the divinity that's within us, however you want to phrase that. When we're in ego, we really cut off our awareness. We're only going to work with the aspects of ourself that we believe to be true and that will be accepted by others. Now, ego can also make you very judgmental, very superior. 
that whole arrogant energy as well. So then you may not care if the other person, you know, believes you or feels good about what you're saying. Regardless, you are not leading with your soul. When you are being solely present within yourself, then you allow all of you to be there. And that's amazing because when all of you is there, you have the ability to tap into all of these different parts of you and know which part will be your strength in that moment. Right? Earlier in the first segment, when I was talking about what I've dealt with, and if you've just joined us, you know, please, after the show, go back and listen from the beginning. There were times when hiding my depression or anxiety or whatever it might be, especially the suicidal thoughts, that was a priority for me and it felt really important. And then after doing a lot of healing and changing and working with what I believe and accepting Karen for who she is, I realized that there were different times when sharing what used to be a real no-no became a gift and a strength. When I could sit across from someone and say, this is where I've been. And they look at me and go, I had no idea. Me too. I, I've got, I, and, they, and we chat. What was something I was not prepared to share with you now is a strength and a connection and enables another door to open for communication and hopefully healing. So ac ac accepting, acknowledging, like knowing all of these parts of you gives you access to so many more ways of communicating and working with someone else. It's a, an amazing feeling to know that what you were hiding away is actually a gift to be shared with someone else. I've shared about being a lousy speller with people and the people like, oh, I did that too. I hated that. And then together we can laugh or do whatever and we can support each other to move that out. There is mm, an integrity that comes through within yourself and it just needs to be within you. When we look at all of these different areas of ourselves and we accept them, see them, work with them, and help them to heal. When you get to that space, then you don't have the need to leave any part of you left out, cut off, or put in a box. You can fully step into who you are, and there is this, there's an empowerment. There's a strength, there's a joy when you're in that space. There's less stress, less anxiety, oh my gosh, and so much less judgment. Think of the kindness energy that's there. It's significant. So where do you start? By looking at what are you hiding? What have you been told is not your strength? And where have you been working from ego only and not from within your full soul, your full being? You can literally write it out, get pen and paper or, or open up something on your phone or your computer or document and start typing, just free flow. Allow everything to come to you out those fingertips, however it's going to be. And then look at what have you been keeping away from other people and from yourself? Here's your starting point. Pick one. Which do you think, can go two ways. Which do you think might be the least stressful or difficult for you to work with, to accept and to bring forward? Or which one could be the greatest benefit to you with where you are in your life and in your work and your family? That if you were to bring that forward and work with it, that would change your life and what you're experiencing and how you're living. 
and then go from there. But look at that list and see where it is that you want to make that shift. By acknowledging it, receiving it, and coming out of the judgment of it, you bring in wholeness. And yes, as I said earlier, you may need some help with that. And the beautiful part of this is that when you bring all this forward for yourself, then you have full access to all of who you are in any or every moment. That enables you to shine. That brings to you a life without the judgments, like I was saying. But it, it allows you to have more self-love, to receive love, to receive compliments, to receive kindness from others. Because as long as we've got those barriers and limitations and hiding things, we're going to really miss out on a compliment from somebody. So you're unsure about your body, how it may look. When someone says, wow, you look great. That color on you is so pretty or so handsome. Like, wow. Do you receive that? Not likely. You're going to either say nothing or go, oh, this. Or you're going to say, yeah, I bought it on sale. You're going to diminish its value to you. But you're going to do and say and act in such a way that that genuine kindness and compliment that that person was giving you is just going to bounce away. That's not being kind to you. That's not being fully present for you. So there's this added plus, right, of being able to have relationships that are in a different way when you're fully accepting you. Like, how wonderful is that to feel that way? When you look at, okay, so why can't I receive a compliment? And what is holding that un underneath? Like, what's holding, what is underneath that's holding that in place? Sorry, <laughs> my mind's going a mile a minute here. And you start to break that down. You can look at what's happened through your life, childhood, school, places of employment that told you that you need to actually stay very closed in this area of your life. You know, saying, yes, thanks, I love this too. Were you shut down and told, quit being so egotistical? Like, or like, you know, hold on. Those are comments coming from another person who has a very similar difficulty that you do. It's their judgments that are coming out. You're receiving the judgment of themselves and bringing it into you and now judging yourself. Not helpful, not kind. But when you actually work with these faults and you allow them to be present and somebody throws something back at you, here's the beauty. Are you ready? It has almost no impact on you and you work with it enough, it has zero impact on you because you know that's an area you have trouble with, right? Me and the computer at the receptionist job. Oh yeah, made a mistake. Okay. No extra stress. No saying, oh, Karen, you were so dumb. No. How do I fix it? What can I learn here? When you fully acknowledge who you are, and you let people see who you are. And sure, you are going to run into people who are going to throw it back at you. But as you heal and you love yourself more and you become less and less judgmental of who you are and more in love with who you are, it doesn't hurt or sting or pull the rug out from under you like it used to. It will not reinforce that you have to keep it hidden it will reinforce that you are fully there for yourself and that what they are saying is based on their difficulty. 
And yes, we make mistakes. Yes, we're going to do something incorrectly. So we fix it. That's it. And we move on. We can learn something new. So maybe it won't happen again. Cool. Not a problem. But none of this happens. You don't get to that place until you recognize and acknowledge. What are you hiding? What is the trauma or the difficulty that's made you buy into this so strongly that you're keeping yourself in this box and not allowing the whole world in? We are up to our third and final break. So don't go away, everyone. We've got so much more for me to wrap up and to pull into the, the last few minutes of our show here. So thank you for being with me. I'm Karen Leslie, your host on Cultivating Kindness with Karen. And I'm so appreciative of you being here with me every week. So we just have a couple of minutes here, something quick for you to listen to. And then when we get back, I will wrap all this up and hopefully encourage you to embrace all of who you are. All right, everyone, don't go away. We'll be right back. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to Karen at KarenLeslie.ca. Now, back to the program. All right, everyone. Thank you for being here with me. Let's get this all wrapped up here before we run out of time. So to recap, yes, all of us, I believe every person on this planet at some point, at some time has hidden parts of themselves from other people. You all have your reasons why I had mine. They're not wrong. However, your reasons for doing this are going to be based on other people's opinions and judgments and things they have said to you that you've bought in to be real and true. So I'm encouraging you to look at this. What are you hiding? What are you not willing to let the world know about you? As I was saying, write it down. Look at this list. Choose an area to look at and work with first. Don't go into all of it. Ooh, that can be so overwhelming. Well, I shouldn't say don't, but... It may be overwhelming for if you choose to go that route. Uh, if you do, get some help. I, I do believe you will need it. But look at what you want to change and what's underneath that, all right? It needs to be really looked at and understood and healed. The trauma, the circumstances, the situation, whatever it might be, that those past memories, they need to be worked with and that healing to come forward so you can embrace it. To just embrace it, to just say, ah, oh, I'm not hiding that anymore. That's going to be part of, I'm just letting the world know. If you don't have that healing and that acceptance and that love for you in that area, then when that is tossed back at you, it's still going to sting. It's still going to cause you some difficulty and it can then make it so that you choose not to share that again with somebody. So healing the trauma that's there is so helpful. Stepping into being in that place of working from your soul and not your ego is an important element of all of this. We need to become more transparent with ourselves. We say, oh yeah, I'm very transparent. I, you know, I'm an open book. Are you really? Don't say that if you're not. Why would you put the energy of a lie out there? And I'm, I'm very serious. Don't say you're an open book or I'm fully transparent if there's certain things you are not willing to talk about or aspects of you that you need to keep hidden. There is no benefit to you or anyone else when you go 
into a conversation or a relationship from that perspective. Understanding who we are is a gift, a phenomenal gift. It allows you to ask for help. It enables you to heal. It brings opportunities to your life that maybe you have never experienced before. And what a gift that would be. When you see how hard you've worked at creating this persona that you felt was necessary at, and the energy it took to keep this facade, because that's what it is. It's not the true you. When you see how much energy it takes to stay in that space and you crack it open, you embrace who you are. You more than embrace it. You love all these aspects of you. You totally accept them. Then there's very little out there that can hurt you. Those emotional wounds, when they heal and someone tries to use it against you, it's not going to be successful. How could you possibly be more kind to you than to work at being in that space? Yes, putting our best foot forward is always a great idea, but not when it prevents us from being who we are. We are moving into on February 10. So in a couple of days, we're February 7, 2024 right now. On the 10th, we move into the year of the wood dragon um, in the Chinese calendar. And it's the strongest sign in their calendar. And it is, it's saying to you, you know, it's a time to launch the dragon in you from a strong platform, which means you could have so much open to you, so much available to you in 2024. It can be fabulous. And then there's all the astrology going in here too with this. Like this year can be phenomenal. But the key words from a strong platform, if you are hiding who you are, you're not working on healing things and aspects of you. Your platform is not going to be strong. There will be areas of weakness, areas where somebody can say something, throw a judgment or throw something hurtful at you to weaken the platform more. To let this dragon out from within you in all its beauty and color and magic and have it sustainable requires a strong platform. And only you can create that strength of that platform by choosing what you will do for you, by being there from the soul. And I encourage you to look at this. Before I forget, next week's show is called Your Unconscious Jailer. Yep. Jail is in bars and key. Mm -hmm. It will be an interesting conversation. And so I hope you will join me next week for that one as well. But in the meantime, right? Remember, you will never know who you are unless you shed who you pretend to be. Right now, majority of the world is pretending to be someone that's not exactly accurate because of hiding the other areas of themselves. To truly be you is all of you. And truly, all of you is amazing. We didn't arrive perfect. We will never be perfect. And these areas that we struggle with are a gift. But we'll only be able to receive that gift, unwrap it and look at it and embrace it if you take the courage to acknowledge that it's there and to do the work and the healing. When you do... You open up so many doors for yourself. And I encourage you. And if you wish help, reach out. Whether it's to me or someone else, it doesn't matter. But don't go it alone. Choose people who you genuinely can trust and allow them there to. Thank you for listening to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Karen Leslie returns Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can find Karen at KarenLeslie.ca and follow her on social media. 
Until next Wednesday, Karen is sending you waves of kindness for a fabulous week. Remember, it's only you who has the power to be and receive the kindness required to change your life.